Can you tell us your name and where you're from? Yes. Yes. So my name is Andres, and I'm from Carbondale, Colorado. Woo! Andres is also very tall. I'm over here. Um, Andres, can you tell us a little bit of what Jesus Christ did in your life and what your life was like before you met him? Yeah, so what I what Jesus did for me, um, I, first of all, I'm the first Christian in my household. Um, never grew up Christian, knew nothing about Christianity. But throughout all my teens, uh, I played a lot of secular Mexican music. Um, I was involved in a lot of drugs and a lot of uh, alcohol and just all that Mexican world uh, stuff uh, that involves with uh, playing corridos and stuff like that. But um, in the transition of my life through my uh, college days, I met this, uh, this woman and uh, she was Christian. Um, we, as life went on, we progressed. We were getting closer and closer. And uh, eventually she became my girlfriend. And then from there on, uh, we transitioned to getting married. Um, throughout that transition of my life, I still didn't lay down my life. I was still uh, playing music. I was still drinking. I was still smoking. I was still doing everything I used to do. Um, she always tried telling me about God. But for me, I never liked hearing about God. I would actually persecute people. Um, I disliked Christians so much just due to the fact that they would tell me about a God that they would tell me about, but I would never see no power being moved. Yeah. Um, along with that, um, I just, she kept on trying and trying. And, and I take it as the, it was the Lord being persistent with me, telling me, it's, it's no, you're going to come over here. It was a point where uh, finally I was like, okay, I'm just going to go to church one time and hopefully you shut up. <laughs> but um, no, uh, I went and I was like, okay, you see, this is what I was telling you, this, this, and that. Um, until it got to a point where our marriage wasn't going that great, that's when I started seeking the Lord. And I was like, Lord, if you're real, you're going to save my marriage. Um, it was till. Uh, I, I kept on going, kept on getting closer, kept on getting closer. And it was till December 24th of 2020 when I actually gave my heart to the Lord. But in all honesty, I give it with the intent that it was going to save my marriage. However, um, after giving my life to the Lord, things took a turn and uh, things got worse. Um, co uh, a month later, um, she decided to leave the house. Uh, my marriage uh, was broken. And when she left, I actually came, I was grieving to the Lord, and I told him, you know what, you're not, you're not real. And I blasphemed the Lord. Um, I said, you're not real. If you would have loved me, you would have taken care of this. Um, this is, you're, you're a liar. And uh, in that moment of laying it all down on the floor, crying out to God, I, I just told him, I was like, you're not real, this, this, and that. And I was crying from my heart. But um, the Lord showed up that moment, and he said, give me 60 days. Um, I, heard, I heard a voice, give me 60 days, and I kept on blaspheming, and I heard it again, and when I heard it the second time, that was the moment that I realized, you know what, <laughs> this is not my mind, this is supernatural stuff right now. Um, I told the Lord, and I surrendered over it to him, and I was like, okay, I'll give you 60 days, to begin to transform my life. From there on, I began to, um, he began to move in my life, he began to do things in my life. I took a trip, and that trip, um, Keep in mind, I knew nothing about Christianity. I knew nothing about the supernatural life. I knew nothing, nothing about God. I took a trip and I wanted to know the Lord more and more and more. And uh, on that trip, I was at full surrender. I was like, God, what are you calling me to do in life and what should I do? And I started manifesting by myself, knowing nothing. I started manifesting and the only thing that could come out, out of my mind, because when I was manifesting, I was about to pick up a gun and kill myself. But deep inside of me, I didn't want to do that but my, my body was doing whatever I wanted to do. And uh, the only thing that came out of my mouth, I was like, Lord, if you're real, please show up right now. And at that moment, that was the moment that something lifted up and I got filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, come on. Wow, that is powerful. Thing. Can you tell us since that moment of surrender, what has Jesus Christ done in your life and how has your life been different? Yeah. So since that moment, it's been a little weird because I knew nothing about this. I knew nothing. And uh, in that moment, I got filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, just started praying in tongues, started prophesying, started doing all these things. And I was like, I don't know none of this. So it was weird at first. And then I, I ran to a church and I was like, hey, pastor, what is all of this? Um, uh, what's up with all of this? I'm praying in this weird language. Um, and he finally explained and all of that. But the, the biggest thing here is 
that the Lord has been using this testimony so that I can touch people's hearts. And apart from that, what the Lord has been doing through me is being bold and preaching the gospel in the streets, preaching the gospel in Walmarts and in city markets and every single place that I can preach it, setting the captives free, healing the sick, laying hands on people and just offer the worship and honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, that's what it's all for. When, when certain things happen in your life and you feel like you're at, you're at your lowest, I was telling Andres that this is your testimony. Your testimony is here to unlock somebody else's brokenness, somebody else's torment that they're going through so that they can be freed, so that they can be healed, and so that they can find salvation to step out and to preach the gospel. This is what this is all for. Um, Andres, can you please give a word of encouragement for those that are watching online or here in person um, who maybe went through a broken heart or broken relationship or marriage? What's a word of encouragement that you can give to them? Yeah, so I got two. Number one, if you're the person that is trying to help that other person convert, not convert over to Christianity, but show them the Lord Jesus Christ, don't give up. Keep on writing their name because uh, they're, they're going to be saved. I, I, the Lord will answer every single prayer and I decree that in the name of Jesus and for the other person for the other person on the other end that has a hard heart I encourage you from the bottom of my heart open it up just soften it all it took me was to soften it and say Lord if you're real show up right now and I promise you he will show up because he came to set the captives free in Jesus name Come on, amen thank you so much Andres Wow, that was powerful. That was a word for somebody here today.